In the 1992 article, which is in the midst of the scandal, Maureen Orth goes on and on about Sun Yi for pages and pages. But oddly, she never interviews Sun Yi directly. Instead, she cobbles together a list of quotes from other people about Sun Yi. A random tutor, people employed by Mia, a friend of the family, a girlfriend of a sibling, people two degrees removed from Sun Yi. In describing Sun Yi, she even quotes Priscilla Gilman. Who is Priscilla Gilman? Daughter of Yale Drama School professor Richard Gilman and literary agent Lynn Nesbitt and an honor student at Yale, who is a longtime girlfriend of Mia's son Matthew Previn. How does any of this qualify her to be an expert on Sun Yi? I am your father's brother's nephew's cousin's former roommate. What's that make us? Absolutely nothing! So let's look at how Maureen Orth paints Soon Yi from the quotes of a random hodgepodge of tenuous acquaintances. Recall how effusive and generous Orth was in describing Mia. Well, the picture she paints of Soon Yi is exactly opposite. According to these quotes, Soon Yi had serious emotional issues. The most learning deprived, the quietest and least socialized of the children. She spent hours on homework it took others half an hour to complete. Because of her learning disabilities, she took the SATs untimed. Her IQ tested as slightly below average. Very deprived early language development. Socially inappropriate. Very, very naive. Trouble processing information. Trouble understanding language. She's very, very literal and flat in how she interprets what she sees and how she interprets things socially. She misinterprets situations. In reference to the single statement Sun Yi ever made to the press, the article casts doubts that Sun Yi could have written the statement to the press. The article even uses an unattributed quote to say, Sun Yi doesn't know half those words, what they mean. Or, if you prefer, in the words of the girlfriend of a brother and the daughter of a professor and the daughter of a literary agent who's an honor student who has zero relationship with Sun Yi, Sun Yi's words are not her own. According to Gilman, Sun Yi's words belong to Woody Allen. The article's implication is clear. Soon Yi is too stupid to have her own mind, and therefore is Woody's puppet. These quotes are not only obviously biased, but the picture they try to paint has logical fallacies. At the time of the article in 1992, Soon Yi is in college and studying psychology. She obviously can read and write in English. Notice how Orth went out of her way to describe Priscilla Gilman as an honor student at Yale, but she doesn't point out that Soon Yi was attending Drew College she would later go on to get her master's at Columbia. There's also no known correlation between having English as a second language, having a learning disability, and being easily manipulated. Plenty of immigrants excel in academics despite speaking English as a second language. Plenty of people with learning disabilities are fiercely independently minded. These cobbled quotes appear to be a thinly veiled attempt to assassinate Sun Yi's character as empty-headed, socially inept, a cultural outsider, a naive alien, which is all code for simply being an Asian immigrant in upper-class white society. So is it a wonder that Soon Yi said nothing else for 20 years? It's intimidating when you have Mia Farrow and established journalists like Maureen Orth and the weight of Vanity Fair calling you dumb, cutting you down to size as soon as you make a statement. When it comes to the war with words, these older white women don't take prisoners.